The New York Islanders had a few surprises up their sleeve when they announced their final cutdowns. We'll talk about who was put on waivers and what it all means. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So you get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet. and You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Lots of surprises as the Islanders announce their final cuts in training camp. We're going to break it all down for you. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, Maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode. Send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can follow the show on X at LockedOnIsles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all year long, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis, and it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. On Sunday, the New York Islanders made the announcement as to who their final cuts were coming out of training camp, and yeah, there were some surprises to say the least. Look, we knew coming in that if the New York Islanders wanted to actually ice a full 23-man roster, they would have to get creative. But I don't know how many people were expecting this. The following players were waived by the Islanders on Sunday. Forward Hudson Fashing, Liam Foody, Frederick Karlstrom, and Pierre Engvall defenseman Samuel Bolduc and Grant Hutton, and goalie Marcus Hogberg, who the Islanders had signed over the summer. I think when you look at this after you get over the initial surprise, I think the two biggest surprises are, number one, that Pierre Engvall did not make the team just one year after Lou Lamorello signed him to a seven-year extension. And number two, that Samuel Bolduc did not make this team. So going to be interesting to see how the Islanders play this. And here's the logic behind the Engvall release. And I'll tell you what the Islanders officially said, and then actually, you know, what it means, what's really going on behind the scenes. So Lou Lamorello addressed the media and he said about Engvall that he lost his job to Siplikov. And he said, it's not that Engvall did anything wrong, but he basically lost the job at this point. He is not a bottom six player. I hate to break it to you, Lou. He's not a top six player. He is a third-line player. That is his ideal role. He's got good speed. He has zero physicality or next to no physicality. And every day, as you know, we have discussed over the course of the last year plus that, you know, hey, Pierre Engvall, not a very physical guy. Last year in 74 games, Engvall was credited with 28 hits. That is a little bit more than one hit every three games. And that's not going to do it for a bottom six player. But he also only scored 10 goals. And when you consider 10 goals and 28 points in 74 games, with seven of those 28 points coming on the power play, because he did get a lot of time on that second 
power play unit, you could see he's not producing as a top line, top six player. He doesn't fit that mold. I think the bottom line is this. Pierre Engvall may have been an acceptable fit. I'm not going to say a good fit, but an acceptable fit under the system that Lane Lambert was running. But under the system that Patrick Waugh is running, it doesn't really seem like Engball fits in. He doesn't play the style that Patrick Waugh wants the Islanders to play. So the other aspect of it is the cap situation, okay? We knew the Islanders didn't have enough cap space to have 23 guys on the roster. The Islanders, if Engball clears waivers, they will free up $1.15 million of cap space. You know what that means? Voila, you can keep Oliver Wallstrom on the roster. Now, it is possible, but highly unlikely, that another team will claim Pierre Engball. And, you know, nobody is going to take The $3 million cap hit is not outrageous, but the six years, including this year, left on his contract is absolutely positively a no starter for a lot of play, a lot of teams out there. Nobody is going to want to commit to a guy who was a third line player in Toronto, has only shown flashes of ability to be more than that with the Islanders. I mean, there have been maybe a few eight, 10 game stretches where, you know, Engvall, Nelson, and Palmieri worked well together. Last year, it was Pajot, Lee, and Engvall in the playoffs that look uh, work well together. But Engvall just doesn't do it consistently. And other than his speed and his reach, he doesn't provide, he's not outstanding defensively. He's not physical. He's not going to put a lot of pucks in the net. You don't want to commit to too many bottom six forwards for seven years. So the odds are nobody is going to claim Engvall. And look, somebody could, but I would say the odds are very highly against it. And that means that Pierre Engvall is going to start the season in Bridgeport. And he's probably going to spend a lot of time in Bridgeport. Uh, essentially what we learn from this particular move is two things more than anything. The bigger thing we learn is that Patrick Waugh now is working with Lou Lamorello and has input into who stays and who goes. And I think that is a really good thing for the New York Islanders because, you know, Maybe Lou Lamorello is the guy buying the ingredients and Patrick Waugh is the, is the chef cooking the meal. But if the guy buying the ingredients doesn't buy the ingredients that the chef wants, that is a recipe for disaster. So Waugh clearly has a lot of say as to the final roster spots and It is good to see, A, a check on Lou Lamorello, and B, I'm going to give credit to Lou for this. He at least wasn't so in love with his, you know, seven-year contract extension that he gave Engball that he didn't admit, you know what, I made a mistake, this is the best way to resolve it, and we move on. So that's one takeaway. And the other is that Lou found a way to get this team cap compliant without having to trade away one of his guys, whether it's J.G. Pajot or Anders Lee or, you know, any of the other players that you've heard us talk every day or is all off season long as to, you know, how the Islanders are going to clear up cap space. So I think this is good. Oliver Wallstrom ends up making the team which also was a big surprise. But here's the difference. I think Oliver Wallstrom is going to start the season on the fourth line 
and he will probably take over the role that Engvall played on the second power play unit. So Wally will probably be more of a grinder, five on five, and then will get a chance with a little more time and space to get some power play minutes in, and maybe that helps him score some more goals this year. And look, between you, me, and the lamppost, this is Oliver Wallstrom's last chance with the Islanders. He has got to make good this year or even get off to a solid start. Uh, you know, and, and then you've got it. Now, Julian Gauthier, he makes the team probably going to be the 13th forward. You have Hudson Fashing waved, Liam Foody waved, Frederick Karlstrom waved. What it also means, though, in my mind, is if Wally stumbles or if Gautier stumbles uh, or any of the other players, you know, in the bottom six, if they either get hurt or struggle, you've got good options in the AHL to fill those voids. Now, if a top six guy goes down, I don't know if you have any, you know, ready goal scorers. You maybe move Wally up to the top six uh, or or maybe Foodie if, if you bring him up or Karlstrom. But again, uh, easier to replace bottom six guys. I think you've got the depth there, but you don't have the depth to replace the goal scorers in the top six. But I think this was a smart move by Lou Lamorello and... Again, I give him credit for admitting, hey, you know what? Pierre Engvall, not working out. We're going to cut bait uh, and and at least move on from him. And again, I don't think we're going to see, barring a major move or an LTIR stint, we're not going to see Pierre Engvall coming up because then his $3 million cap hit comes back into play. So, We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the return of Ilya Sorokin to practice, plus what this all means right now for Samuel Bolduc. We've got all that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Indeed. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with quality candidates faster. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. So Samuel Bolduc. Also, let go. He was placed on waivers. And look, this one is a little different in my mind. It is more likely that someone will place a claim on Samuel Bolduc. And, you know, we'll know by the end of the day, Monday, whether or not he gets claimed. If he gets claimed, you lose him for nothing. He is done Uh, you know, another team will take on his contract and he is no longer a New York Islander. And you took a high draft pick and failed to develop him and on he goes. So, you know, that's not a good situation. You got a former second round pick, but you know, he was in no man's land the last couple of years because He wasn't playing well enough, and I think confidence had a lot to do with it with Bolduc. He wasn't playing well enough to be in the top six and play every game, but he's not going to get better being 21, 22, now 23 years old, and being in the press box. He either needed to play in the NHL or play in the AHL. And again, this is just a mishandling 
of the the way you develop a prospect. And I'm not going to say Bull Duke himself is without blame because his game did not take a big step forward in the last two seasons. But at the same time, you can't put him in a situation where you can't send him down without expi- exposing him to waivers, but you also can't put him in the lineup because he's not good enough. Somewhere along the line, they failed Samuel Bolduc, and somewhere along the line, he failed to take that next step forward. So I'm not blaming the organization entirely. I'm not blaming Bolduc entirely. But let's just say that this could have been handled better by both sides. And now, look, is it possible that a team like the Ducks claims Bolduc because, you know, Brent Thompson was Bolduc's coach. He's familiar with the player down in Bridgeport for a couple of years. Maybe they make that move on uh, Monday afternoon and make the claim. Maybe he goes unclaimed and ends up back in Bridgeport. We don't know, but it is very, very possible that Samuel Bolduc may not be a New York Islander as of the time you even, you know, listen to or watch this podcast. Right now, Dennis Chalowski is the seventh defenseman on the roster. He beat out Grant Hutton for that spot. Not sure that Chalowski is the guy who's going to remain the seventh defenseman. So will the Islanders try to claim somebody else and then send Chalowski back to Bridgeport? Maybe. Will the Islanders stay with Chalowski? Or, you know, if Bolduc clears waivers, do they bring him back up and send Chalowski back down? If Bolduc clears, I, I can easily see that happening if Chalowski doesn't play well or doesn't look good in practice, or if Bolduc or Hutton play particularly well at Bridgeport. Again, the thing I like about all these moves and the way things are being done this year is that the Islanders are no longer going with the country club mentality. There is competition for roster spots and competition for playing time. And that, more than anything, I think, is what you want to see from the New York Islanders. Now, the other move that was interesting to me, Marcus Hogberg, now sent down to Bridgeport. and. We saw on Friday that we now have, you know, a a player practicing again in Ilya Sorokin with the New York Islanders. Did not play in Friday's preseason game. So is he ready to, to be the backup Thursday when they open the season against Utah? We don't know. We may not know that until we get closer to game time. But it does not look like there's an IR stint coming for Ilya Sorokin. And an LTIR stint looks extremely unlikely, barring what we hope would not happen, which is a re-aggravation of the back injury. So Sorokin is back. He has not played in any of the six preseason games. He basically came back at the very last minute that you could come back in order to make uh, you know, the the opening night roster. And that is an encouraging thing for the New York Islanders. Whether he plays the season opener, I doubt he starts. I think that it will be Varlamov. And then I think that you will see uh, Sorokin back him up. And then, you know, Saturday night in Dallas, maybe you see Sorokin. Monday night in Colorado, I think he'll play one of those first three games. The question is, how sharp is he? How ready is he? And realistically, I think the Islanders do have some real opportunities here to, to get that job done and to get Sorokin ready for the season. So uh, last minute save and a beauty as far as Sorokin's potential availability. Again. Nothing etched in stone, but if you have to bring Hogberg back up, there are cap ramifications of that. So we'll see 
how it plays out. But right now, it looks like Ilya Sorokin will at least be in the lineup and serve as the backup to Semyon Varlamov Thursday when the New York Islanders open their season at home against Utah Hockey Club. Folks, the preseason is over. I mean, there were already two regular season games that counted. The Devils beating Buffalo twice in Prague over the weekend. The NHL season is here. And Thursday, the Islanders season is here. This is a great time for hockey fans and for Islander fans. And I'm excited about the start of the new campaign. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We're going to talk a little bit about The Islanders' performance against the Rangers in the preseason finale. We'll have that, plus our Islanders' birthday of the day, and a whole lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you could check out instant stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Islander fans, this is a great time to check out the latest odds on FanDuel. Well, will the Islanders make the playoffs? How many points will Matthew Barzal get? How many goals will Maxim Siplikov get? Will Ilya Sorokin win 25 games, 30 games? Check out all the odds on FanDuel. Again, get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. For your second listen, find Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Become a hockey fan, a, a fantasy hockey expert and get the edge on your league mates with daily tips from Steel and Flip. Find Locked On Fantasy Hockey on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Islanders finished out the preseason on a strong note. And you had to be happy with the team's 5-2 to two win over the Rangers at UBS Arena. And I really enjoyed this game. Islanders out shooting the Rangers 38-22. to 22. Really, only the second period were the Rangers seriously threatening the Islanders in this game. All the goals coming off of Igor Shesterkin. Semyon Varlamov goes all the way for the Islanders. He looks ready to start the season. And the other thing that I loved, the Islanders scored twice on the power play and the Rangers power play 0-4-2. The other thing that really was special was the top line. Matthew Barzal, a goal and four assists. Bo Horvat, two goals. Anthony Duclair, a goal and two assists. Duclair and Barzal, plus three. Horvat, plus two. You have to like that. Adam Pellick, Ryan Polak, also plus three for the Islanders in this game. They are starting to look a little better as a pair. And again, overall, just a stronger performance. And I'll say this, Maxim Siplikov, He had a goal and an assist. He continues to play well. And he, uh, the thing I really like about Siplikov is that he is not fast, but he is smart with the puck. And he does a great job of screening the goalie. Basically going to take over the Anders Lee role whenever he's out there on the ice, getting in front. He knows how to, get the puck to his teammates. He knows how to avoid opposing players and just overall just plays a smart game of hockey. And that's what you need to see. That is going to make the difference maybe to speed up his adjustment from the KHL to the NHL. On the downside, Grant Hutton and Mike Riley, both minus two. And I think Hutton being a minus two, Taking a minor penalty, that prevented him 
from maybe solidifying the seventh defense spot for the New York Islanders. So he is no longer going to be, you know, he's going to start the season in Bridgeport. And I, I just liked this game. The Islanders did not lose a lead. They managed to extend the lead. You had a really good face-off game by J.G. Pajot, winning 9 out of 10. Brock Nelson, 6 out of 9. They were physical enough. I, I just think this was a strong overall performance by the New York Islanders to close out the preseason. And again, let, let, let's be serious here. As of Thursday, when the regular season kicks off, the Islanders' preseason record means absolutely nothing. But I think we're seeing this team play more of the way Patrick Waugh wants them to play. And we're seeing the top line really gel. We're seeing Siplikov really gel and, and prove that he is a bona fide second-line guy, or at least should eventually be that. And I think he's going to get a chance to start the season on the second line. And we'll see if he can keep it going. Uh, but I think overall, we're seeing the Islanders looking smarter on the ice. And that is the thing you needed to see. And that is the key, one of the keys to this team improving. If the PK can keep on playing better and the power play can be just a smidge better than it was last year, you're potentially talking about some improvement here. A am I sitting here telling you right now, as of October 7th, that the Islanders are all of a sudden bonafide cup contenders? No. But I think it is clear that they are playing better hockey than they did a year ago, and that is a step in the right direction, and let's see where it goes from there. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. I didn't give you a clue on this one, but it's a pretty easy one if I would have. But Sunday was the 50th birthday of former Islanders defenseman Kenny Janssen. The Swede, drafted by the Maple Leafs in the first round, 12th overall in 1993, made his NHL debut for Toronto in 94-95, traded to the Islanders in the 95-96 season and stayed with the Isles through the 0304 season when he returned to Sweden to finish out his career after the 2008-2009 campaign. And Janssen, best year, 40 points, 14 goals, 26 assists for the Isles in 97-98, was a captain, really did a, a really good job for some shaky Islanders teams in the late 90s. And then again, when the Islanders made the playoffs three straight years in the early 2000s. One of his better games as an Islander, February 4th, 2002, Islanders visiting the Florida Panthers in South Florida. Chris Osgood starting in goal for the Islanders and uh, Roberto Luongo starting in goal for Florida. Neither of those goalies would finish the game. The Islanders get on the board first shorthanded. Janssen setting up Dave Scatcherd with a shorthanded goal. Oleg Kavasha, the other assist. That made it one nothing Islanders. Then on the power play, Janssen and Lexi Yashin set up Adrian Acoin to make it 2 nothing Islanders. But unfortunately, the uh, Panthers tie it. Islanders take a 3-2 lead. And then midway through the second, Janssen scores. Brad Isbister with the assist. To make it four to two Islanders. Islanders then take a five to two lead and then give up four straight goals in the third to give Florida a six five lead. But Dick Tarnstrom scores for the Islanders with a little more than four minutes left, and that ties it. The game ends in a six six tie. But for Kenny Johnson, a goal, two assists. That's a three point night. He is a plus one, has three shots on goal, and he played 30 minutes and 21 seconds of ice time. Garth Snow gets the tie, relieving Osgood early in the third period, while Trevor Kidd ends up with the tie for the Florida Panthers. But it's a 6-6 tie, but a great game for Kenny Janssen. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day, as we will be back tomorrow. We'll tell you what happened with all the waiver call, uh, waiver procedures, whether or not anybody was claimed, 
whether or not there's an update on Ilya Sorokin's situation and just give you a better idea of what line combinations to expect as we get closer and closer to opening night for the New York Islanders. Hey, everybody, have a great day. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.